Does just thinking about how embarrassing it is when you sweat too much make you sweat? The amount we perspire varies significantly from person to person. And while no one knows for sure exactly why this is true, there is some wisdom on the matter. Here to share it with us is WSJ contributor Heidi Mitchell. Heidi, welcome. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. So sweating is a natural process. It's not the enemy, correct? Yeah. Imagine if, you know, you were, your body was heating up and all that water that it was wanting to get rid of just stayed inside. I think you'd become some sort of a blob so it wants to it, it's it's a cooling mechanism exactly right? it's yeah. cooling your core temperature it's releasing water so that as the water evaporates you feel the sense of cooling you know that when you go running you feel that yes and you're sweating as you're racing to get to a meeting it also gets rid of some uh, some of those salts and electrolytes as you sweat a lot so you want to replace those but it also acts as a hydrator is so, there anything to that you know they say when you go to a sauna you sweat out toxins is there anything to that or is that an old wise you know story? it's there's not not a lot of right. time, not a lot of science on that, that stuff. Yeah, but it feels good. It, feels, right? it definitely feels good. But why is it then? Then some people seem to sweat so much more. Are there factors like genetics involved? So there seems to be. That is the theory that there is some genetics involved. I was with a friend the other night. We were talking about this, and he was just sweating, and it was cold. Just that we, thinking about it. Yeah, and I was like, and he's like, I want to read your story because I'm such a sweater. He's sweating out of his head and yeah. of his neck, and and yes, yeah, so it seems to be. I asked if his parents were yeah. sweaters. Yes, yeah, so it seems to be like it, there is some genetic tie. But it has to do with fitness level. It has to do with weight. It can do sometimes with what you eat. So the more fit we are, the less or the more efficiently we sweat. So the so if you're not that fit, mm -hmm. you seem to sweat a little bit more because we think that it takes your body a little bit more effort to it. cool down. But if you're super fit, your body's really efficient. So the funny thing is you'll start to sweat earlier ah. in the same equivalent exercises. That's Very what today's show. So you might appear to be sweating the same amount, maybe seem like a sweater, but your body's just really efficient if right. you're used to working out a lot. If you're not, but there's also this tiny segment of the population that just sweats excessively for no good reason, right? Right. So there are two kinds of sweating. There's the kind of sweating that's due to, you know, cooling your body temperature down. And then there's something called emotional sweating. And that's like nervousness and um, stress related. And it's part of your fight or flight syndrome or whatever, the, the fight or flight response. Yeah. And so, uh, so, you know, lots of things can trigger it. And it's sort of they think that the sweating mechanism is that sort of gone haywire. So there's surgical procedures that you can do to prevent that. There's there's lots of solutions for that. But it is it is kind of an overactive I sweat I had a gland. friend in school who would sweat so much through his hands that he had trouble yeah. taking tests because it would just get all over the paper. And, and what's things. funny is it's, so it's called hyperhidrosis. It's not funny. But what's, the hyperhidrosis is really, it doesn't have a threshold. Like there's not a specific point at which you're sweating so much that you're called, you have hyperhidrosis. It's when it becomes socially embarrassing. Right. and unacceptable to sort of shake people, your boss's hand or right. write at school. So is there anything that can be done? Of course, there's lots that can be done. So you can start with using um, an antiperspirant that has uh, aluminum in it, which a lot of them do, but you can use, use it on your hands and your feet and wherever else you sweat. That's not your typical underarm. Can you um, then get you a get, prescription? You can get a prescription okay. for a stronger one. Some people say that the aluminum is, is toxic. Uh, mostly it's going to probably irritate your skin. Right. Um, it doesn't work on everybody, but it does a pretty good job. Next step is Botox, which really? works really well. What it's does a, the Botox? It oh, paralyzes, just the yeah, glands? yeah, oh my yeah. Uh -huh. The aluminum kind of kills them off. You have yeah. millions of them, so it's okay. Um, and then the Botox kind of freezes them. And then the last step is they they basically cut the connection to your nerve system. And so wow. it's not it's not getting the signal to release the sweat. And That's clearly extreme. It's extreme, but it, it, it really works it almost works. all the time. I think he said 98% of the time. Oh, wow. My goodness. Goodness. What about just wearing loose fitting clothes? Oh yeah, those are easier. <laughs> How about wear loose fitting clothes that's made of organics or naturals, um, layer up, especially when you're switching from hot and cold temperatures. Stay fit, stay hydrated. Take lots of showers. And take lots of showers. <laughs> Heidi Mitchell, thank you so much for that.